This is James Tuthill, and I am reporting from Washington, D.C. I am exclaiming to the world today that Donald J. Trump is a neo-Nazi, a fascist, and a white supremacist. And so is his father, and I have the proof. During the campaign, Trump repeatedly declined to refuse the endorsement of David Duke, a former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. He did not want to alienate or lose any of his white supremacist followers. What did Trump have to say? I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with white supremacy or white supremacists. I don't know. Did he endorse me or what's going on? Because I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. He lies. He lies. These are pure, unadulterated lies. He's lying to cover up his Hitler-like tendencies. He knows damn well who David Duke is. He knows all about white supremacy because he is a white supremacist. Let us go back in time to find out the true nature of the Trump family. On Memorial Day, 1927, a day to remember the heroes who fought for America, brawls erupted in New York led by sympathizers of the Italian fascist movement and the Ku Klux Klan. In the fascist brawl which took place in the Bronx, two Italian men were killed by anti-fascists. In Queens, 1,000 white-robed Klansmen marched through the Jamaican neighborhood, eventually spurring an all-out brawl in which seven men were arrested. One of those arrested was none other than Fred Trump of 175-24 Devonshire Road in Jamaica, Queens. Fred was none other than the follower of Donald. Fred was the son of a Nazi in Germany. The predication for the Klan to march, according to a flyer passed around Jamaica beforehand, was that native-born Protestant Americans, the people from Northern Europe, in other words, were being, quote-unquote, assaulted by Roman Catholic police in New York City. It went on to say liberty and democracy have been trampled upon when native-born Protestant Americans dare to organize to protect one flag, the American flag, one school, the public school, one language, the English language. I am telling you now, all of my listeners, if you are not of Northern European heritage and you are living in America, you are in trouble. Trump only considers Ar Aryans, Hitler's race, to be worthy of being Americans. People of color, Latins, Muslims, Jews, blacks, they are out. They are finished. In places like Florida, the coloreds, as Trump thinks of them, are to be rounded up and taken in migrant buses to concentration camps in the Everglades, and they are to be brought back each day to mow the fairways at one of Trump's golf courses. This is his dream. This is his ultimate goal. We are going to have a fascist dictatorship in the United States of America. You mark my words. The news article from the New York Times, which talked about the fascist and Klan rally, and which is one of the only papers today standing up to Trump, simply notes that seven men were arrested in the near riot of the parade, all of whom were represented by the same lawyer. Another article from the Daily Star, a New York paper at that time, notes that none other than Fred Trump was detained on a charge of refusing disper to disperse from a parade when ordered to do so. When news of the old report surfaced last year, he lied. He lied. Trump vehemently denied his father's arrest. He was never arrested. He has nothing to do with this. This never happened. This is nonsense, and it never happened. This is what he said to the Daily Mail. I say to Trump, you lie. You lie. Trump, you lie. And Trump's claim to know nothing about David Duke and white supremacists and the Klan and his father's Nazi past remind me of the language of the 19th century Know Nothing Party, 
a nativist group that supported only Protestants for public office. I'm going to tell you, Donald Trump and his surrogates have been playing footsie with American neo-Nazis for months, tweeting their memes, retweeting their messages, appearing on their radio shows. He speaks of international banks plotting the destruction of U.S. sovereignty and that a global power structure is conspiring against ordinary Americans. The Jewish Anti-Defamation League urged Trump to avoid rhetoric and statements that historically have been used against Jews. This is the exact same language that Hitler used. And when Trump talks about international banks and the global power structure, he's talking about the Jews, the Rothschilds, and Goldman Sachs, and Jews all around the world, whom he sees as evil rodents who must be eliminated. In some campaign ads, Trump depicted all Jews, including the financier George Soros. He had a caption under his picture, those who control the levels of power. The Fed Chair, Janet Yellen, her caption, Global Special Interests. Goldman Sachs CEO, Lloyd Blankfein, Global Power Structure. These are all code words saying that Jews control the world and finance and banks and money and must be eliminated. The ad says that Hillary Clinton partners with these people who don't have your good in mind. At first, it was sort of a genteel chauvinism, such as Trump telling the Jewish Republicans they wouldn't support him because I don't want your money, meaning that there's a Jewish lobby in Washington and Jews give a lot of money to campaigns. And he had this business about his Jewish son-in-law, and he thought that could give him some cover. Believe me, he doesn't care if his son-in-law is Jewish or that his daughter Ivanka converted to Judaism. He is the son of a Nazi fascist. He was brought up to hate and despise Jews. You can take that to the bank. Well, then we had tweets Trump of an image previously found on an anti-Semitic message board of a Star of David atop a pile of cash. Trump later objected to his campaign's decision to remove the image. He objected to that. Trump retweeted a message from a Twitter site called White Genocide, relaying phony crime statistics that originated with neo-Nazis in a quote from Benito Mussolini. His campaign blamed an intern for tweeting an image of Nazi soldiers superimposed on the American flag next to Trump's likeness. Trump said, I don't have a message for supporters who threatened anti-Semitic violence against a Jewish journalist. And Melania Trump said the writer provoked the attacks. Breitbart News, the alt-right, ultra-conservative, hateful website full of neo-Nazis, until recently run by Trump's campaign chief Steve Bannon, refers to Bill Kristol as a renegade Jew and to the columnist Ann Applebaum as Polish, Jewish, and an American elitist. Now, in February 2017, a month after the inauguration, we are having waves of bomb threats called into Jewish community centers around the country, and centers and synagogues are being dis defaced. This is the work of Trump's voters and followers, the brown shirts, who yearn for an America of white supremacy. Trump is their, their Hitler and they will follow him anywhere. They hate Roman Catholics, blacks and Jews, and Latins, Muslims, American Indians, and anyone whom they do not consider to be white. After a number of weeks following these incidents, Trump finally made a statement with all his usual pomposity. He said, someone wrote this for him, he didn't write this himself. We have to fight bigotry, intolerance, and hatred in all of its very ugly forms. You're the ugly one, Donald. You're the bigot. You're the intolerant one. You're the one who does these postings. He went on to say the American anti-Semitic threats targeting our Jewish community and community centers are horrible and are painful, and a very sad reminder of the work that still must be done to root out hate and prejudice and evil. Donald, you are the hateful one, the prejudiced one, the evil one. You are the horrible and painful one. It's too late for meaningless words, Donald. 
We know who you are and what you are. Your father instilled it in you. You are a hater, a hater of everything that is not Northern European and of the Aryan race. You want to deport and exterminate all those who are not your shade of white and who do not seek a fascist dictatorship founded upon white supremacy. Donald, the good people will rise up, you neo-Nazi monster, and we will defeat you. You will not become the dictator of America. No matter how much blood has to be shed, we will defend the United States of America from you, you monster.